Hi there. In this video, we will be building something really cool. I had this idea more than a year ago. Uh, contacted Parts Express about it. They were uh, happy to join it and uh, sent all of this cool stuff. Uh, the beer I handled myself. I, yeah, it was it was hard, but somebody needed to to do it. <laughs> um, Anyway, but sadly life happened and I didn't have time to go on with the project, but now I do have time. So let's build some cool speakers out of these beer kegs and with all of the nice parts uh, from Parts Express. And this will also be the absolute first project in my finished workspace that you will see around in this video. So yeah, Parts Express, sorry for delaying the video. Yeah, life happened again. But at least I'm trying to somehow compensate by making it the first video in this uh, finished workspace. To get them out of the way because they are quite big, 5 liter uh, metal beer kegs, standard variety, uh, find your own. I will not put a link for those. Uh, this is uh, polyfill for um, speakers. Basically this will fluff up a lot when I get it out of this bag and we will fill the speakers because otherwise I don't know how anything will sound in those uh, metal cans basically. But with this should be all good. Then uh, what else? I think this will be a two part video, first part more on uh, the initial uh, presentation of these uh, parts and uh, the plan itself and uh, second part mostly with building it, probably. We will see how it goes. And this little uh, Dayton uh, audio speakers, you can see the info about them here and I wanted these particular ones. Uh, because they are actually coaxial, they have the tiny silk dome tweeter right in the middle and this is its wire going uh, to it. And you can see uh, this nice coil in here, I really like it when I'm able to see the coil on a speaker itself moving in there. So I think they will be quite good for our project, everything in a single speaker that will be on the front of uh, the beer keg. If you want uh, any more info about them, I will put links in the description for everything that I use. These uh, are the speakers. So uh, get this a little bit out of the way. Obviously in here another one because uh, the kind of needs stereo speakers. If you want to have an idea on how they will fit, uh, presumably something like this. But not sure if I will put on this end or on this end. Still thinking about it. I will plan that a tiny bit later. Speaker wire because uh, I will have one of them powered and the other one will be attached to the main one. So transparent speaker wire, here it is. Then uh, let's go further. I wasn't sure about the size of these uh, thingies. I think this is the open box. <laughs> they are a bit big. Uh, most likely way more powerful than they need to be. Uh, these are the crossovers, 4500 uh, hertz uh, crossover point, but uh, we will have plenty of space in the beer kegs. So although they are uh, quite big, we will find the room in there for them without absolutely any issues. And I'm sure they can handle way more power than uh, we will be throwing at them because I don't think we will be throwing more than 15 to 20 watts per speaker. So these are also the crossovers. Let's get them somewhere in there. And what we have in this tiny box, Ta -da -da! the amp board itself with Bluetooth capability because I wanted this to also be Bluetooth. It can also have an auxiliary input. Let's see where is the model itself. You can see it here. So it's basically, from what I remember, about 15 watts per channel. 
maybe we will have a bit more info right on this uh, tiny paper. Class D audio amplifier with 5.0 Bluetooth, which will give us good audio quality for our purposes, <laughs> way more than enough. And we have the pinout of uh, this thingy right here. Which is great, we'll, we'll be getting more into each and every single of these uh, modules while we are building it. Uh, this thing is just some legs for the beer kegs because they will be rolling otherwise, so this will stop the rolling in the position that we want it. Uh, some speaker connectors because uh, again we will have a speaker output and we need to somehow get into the other the secondary driven speaker an antenna for our bluetooth module because beer kegs metal faraday cage no bluetooth signal will get into them so we want an external bluetooth antenna to have uh, access to the signal this is just uh, a bracket for supporting the pcb and I will see how uh, I will mount this maybe with pop reverts uh, inside of our beer kegs. Also the filters might uh, end up uh, being uh, pop riveted in place. Not sure. They are quite big so we are still thinking, debating uh, on that. And in here we have the, the power supply for everything quite a uh, heavy power supply so yeah i am satisfied that this is decent quality uh, cheap power supplies 99 percent of the time are really light this nah, doesn't give me the feeling of being a cheap one at all so 15 volts for amps uh, yep this will handle what we need if you do the maths this can output about 60 watts of power uh, considering all the losses whatnot but we are maximum drawing about 15 uh, no 30 watts of uh, musical power so this can do that uh, connection wires for uh, i think it's for power but we'll get exactly into what every single one of them does this should be the dc power in jack let's see next in here so this is the lead package we have leads in here red green and blue we will see not sure if we will use all of them red for sure uh, to show when uh, uh, this thing is uh, powered on blue for the bluetooth for sure but the green one eh, still thinking if i will use it or not uh, something was in here at the point in time or maybe it's just from a different project that little bag I think we have here the volume button itself with uh, its uh, cable and the on off switch but I'm not sure if I will use it as an on off switch uh, because basically this will be plugged into a socket that has its on off switch so for me to have two on off switches on them I'm still thinking if that will be necessary or not because I normally want to also shut this off not only the load on it so fully shut off all the power supply i always try to shut off all the power supplies in my house not only the laptop after it or something like that hey saving a bit of energy if i can and uh, less heat being uh, produced inside the house anyway so you see about this i might use it just to switch from bluetooth to auxiliary in but we'll see and uh, yeah that's about uh, all she wrote so at this point let me think about exactly how i want to have this it seems i didn't do the job properly something was left in here yet um, normally this is the smaller end and this is the bigger one if i put this speaker like this just to have an idea you can see quite a lot of um, space remains on the outside so i'm not sure how that will look like if i put it on the smaller end i will not push it because we have actually no it will not reach that because it has a, a gap in it basically this i think it will look a, uh, a little bit better because it's more um, 
it's closer to the size of the, the keg itself. So I might be going for this end, but as you can see, this has somewhat flat edge on it. And this is at a somewhat angle, but I think once we uh, factor in that this has soft foam in here, I think we will be enough and I can double on the foam uh, if uh, I actually need to. Uh, now what I need to do, see exactly what diameter hole I need to drill. These are uh, cast uh, aluminum, really nice frame to them. And I'm honestly quite curious at this point to see how uh, much excursion they have. So I might be powering one of these uh, in a moment to see how it actually plays. But uh, yeah, really nice build. I really like them. Big, big magnet for uh, such a small speaker and being, uh, I don't know, two way, if you want to call it that, with a tweeter in the middle, both of uh, best of both worlds. Just some info about these things, at least from this brand. Uh, as long as you have ripped the plastic that was here holding it apart, so it doesn't interfere, you bend this down so it stays in place and then uh, honestly just smack them. And they are going back in their position. And I want to keep as much from the uh, kegs themselves as possible measured the diameter that I need to cut it's about 9.6 centimeters because it kind of aligns with this hole right here you can see it so uh, this gap not hole now what I need to do to mark on this use this thingy and take about half of that so that, that kind of means uh, 4.8. Uh, I'm not measuring from the end. I'm. It's easier for me to go from 10 to 14.8. 14.8. And now the diameter will have the proper size when I mark it. Uh, on this I kind of need to find the middle I presume it's about here but I need to to make sure and I'm going to drill a tiny hole in there for this to have a place to sit when I'm uh, scratching this whole surface and this is the tiny hole and this is how I can mark all around to wherever I need to. Hmm. Luckily I checked the diameter and because this is higher we actually lost a little bit so it's not enough it's not only about 9.3 uh, centimeters so I need to make another line a bit on the outside. I will add about two or three millimeters uh, on the radius to have the proper final diameter. And the first one is cut, still sharp edges, I need to file them down. And I was under the impression that this thing is really thin and it will be really easy to, to bend it, for example, by mistake when tightening the speaker or something. No way, this thing is really thick. Maybe not one millimeter, but close to it. And for us, it's awesome. I also washed a little bit the interior. It still had some uh, leftover beer in it. Might wash it even more. Now let me just dry up uh, this and put in the speaker to get a rough idea if uh, what I did here is good or not to do it on the second one also. Let's see what we did. <laughs> ah, this is not aluminum. This is steel, so it's magnetic. I need both hands. And we are almost in. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Now this is good. Plenty of room to drill my holes and whatnot. 
Okay. This looks actually really cool. Ooh. Yeah, I'm still wet on my fingers. It's not even sealed, nor do I have that thing in, but... Already a bit of base to it. As opposed to having this thing in the air. Next step, use some uh, sandpaper to file down the edges. I don't want to cut myself while working because I will need to put my hand in here. We will be drilling holes in the end of this for various connectors. So this needed to be filed down. There's still some water in there after washing it a little bit. With the kegs being prepared, my next plan is to do a sanity check by following uh, this and making sure that I have everything that I need. So, in detail, the module, not sure if I already told you yet, it's a Dayton Audio KAB-215V2, 2 times 15 watts uh, and it's Bluetooth 5.0, so good sound quality. And uh, yeah, this is kind of what you need and uh, the designations for all of the connections on this board. And in theory, we have everything right here. Let's get this out of the way first. It's normally the bracket for uh, connecting our uh, PCB to whatever you build in. In our case, again, the kegs with four screws that will be going through the PCB into this. And I think we will actually be drilling two more holes. And I might be putting the PCB straight like this into our keg directly on uh, attached to the bottom side. Which, uh, yes, being round, I will choose the bottom side by the thing that I don't want to see that much. So I want to basically see more of uh, interesting stuff, not uh, the way in which you open the keg to drink it. We already went through that. So this probably will be bottom side. You will choose your own. Anyway, so this quite simple. Then obviously the PCB itself, I will not take it out of uh, its protection ESD bag. We have here the little antenna for uh, Bluetooth because again we are in a metal box and uh, that will not give uh, Wi-Fi signal. So we will need to drill a hole and then this attaches on the other end. Let's put everything together and in case you ever need to take it apart, it seems we are provided with a little protection, which is awesome honestly. So. That's also to the side. Screws, yes, our uh, power jack, which <clears throat> should fit directly into this. And it does, which is again, perfect. I think I showed you the power brick, so it's four amps, 15 volts. Quite a bit of power, feels good in the hand. This goes away. Cables, we have the audio output cables, which is this with four pins and this thingy for power, power in basically. So these are good. We have our LEDs. Because this module can also be used with uh, lithium batteries. We have a red charging LED. They are uh, color coded by the positive wire, I think. A blue Bluetooth LED and a green power LED. I'm not sure if I will use all of them because I'm not using uh, a battery. I might be just using red as power because I like red LEDs as they were used back in the day for power and blue for Bluetooth and green 
uh, I might be hanging on to it for uh, a future uh, project maybe. I'll see about that. In here. Come on. Let's get out everything from this bag. We have this, which is auxiliary input. And you might be thinking, hey, but why are there four wires on it? If I understand this correctly, when you plug something in, it will actually tell the board, hey, something is plugged into this uh, switch to auxiliary uh, mode and disable Bluetooth mode. As for example, uh, all the cassette players, when you plugged in the headphones, it would uh, mute the speakers and switch to headphones. Same type of uh, connection in here to tell the board, hey, something is plugged in here, which is awesome. Good idea about that, so we don't need to flip a switch or something like that. Then we have this, which is uh, the connector for the volume button, which basically kind of plugs in like this, and the other end will plug be plugged into the board, obviously. The uh, cables themselves are fairly long, I think they are about half a meter long, so uh, no matter your project, you should be good enough. Next thing is in here, our power switch. Cool. This obviously, all of them have uh, connectors, so they directly plug into the board. This is like doing Lego at this point. Uh, this one is for uh, the battery. I think you need the supplementary um, um, battery charging board, if I'm not mistaken. With this we will not be using because we don't have batteries. So yeah, that's about it with the wires. And then, yes, the feet, I already showed you the cable and uh, this connector, but I'm not sure. Will I use this or not a different kind of connector? Uh, here I'm still thinking, we'll see up until the end. Exterior is actually. This is interesting. So, this one, which we can see here, is actually this, but it's not directly connected to the exterior. It only connects to the barrel when you plug it in. Okay, okay. I can uh, leave it that. Let's see, do we have anything connected to ground directly? No. We don't have anything directly connected to ground. Then what is happening in here? Why do we have three wires? Let me try and connect to the center pin. Uh, it's not going to be that easy. Okay, so this is positive from the central pin. That's quite clear now. But that should be negative, and this one, this one is not yet doing anything. This is interesting. So this one is basically not connected to anything at the moment. Let me try and give it a bell with the, the other ones. Ah, okay. So it's directly connected to minus 
when I don't have anything plugged into it. Let me show you again this. Hey, this one. So this one with this one. Okay, stay in there. I should have brought my alligator clips. And when I plug something in, no more connection. So I think this uh, might be useful for when you are running on batteries and you plug something in, so you know how to, you know when to switch from batteries to being plugged in. We are not using this in my case, so we only need this one which we can kind of are able to see that it's directly coming from the center pin, which is positive. And this one, which goes all the way to the other side and it's in here. And it's actually the little tongue for the negative. So only this two, this one for us is, will not be used. I'm going to put some heat shrink on it to be left there unused. Maybe in the future, who knows? I might add batteries, but for the moment, for me, no need. And we are ready for the first power on. Just want to show you, be a little bit careful about these connections because they are not the same on both sides. So the lower one is positive for the left speaker and the higher one negative. On this side, the lower one is negative and the higher one is positive. So that's a little bit of a trap for you. But uh, yeah, should be fine. So we have uh, disconnected and heat shrinked in place. So basically the positive is the one that you can see goes directly to the middle. That's the positive. The other one in the middle is the negative and this one is the sense wire. So now here we have the power switch and I'm not sure if the power switch is on or off, but really doesn't matter. Connected that cable to the power brick and uh, yeah, let's uh, connect this and uh, see how everything works and we have a little bluetooth light so this was actually on let me turn it off now it's off so officially turn it on from uh, its own switch and we also have the red light right there you can see it so uh at this point, with a Bluetooth device, search for this thingy, and presumably this is it. Is it? Yeah, this is it. Hey, are we connecting to it? Yeah, now we are connecting to it. Look at the light think it should be a steady on. Couldn't connect. Hmm. I don't like that. Pair? Yes, pair. Connected. Not sure why it uh, did not connect the first time. Honestly, on this particular phone, it's my wife's. It's the first time I'm using the Bluetooth. So, yeah. But as you can see, steady blue light red light for power so we are on let me search for something to play and be back in a second and we are playing but just uh, one thing we don't have the tweeters connected yet we are also not connected through the filters but i might not use the filters i realized that they are a bit too big for what i'm doing here i will show you later in the video so i might be going with either another pair of filters that I have or simply use uh, capacitors for the tweeters that also works and for our purpose is more than enough 
and the filters that we have uh, for this project I will use in another pair of speakers that will be a future video so they don't remain unused nothing remains unused this is the song thanks David for uh, letting me use uh, your song in my tests really nice song so volume from the phone but in theory also from here That was a bit weird. Let me go to the end. I think I touched something with my... Yeah, I touched something with my finger. That's why we had a, an initial bump in volume. Obviously, I'm not going to go full volume on this yet. I like this and honestly I want to tell you something these things actually are good in uh, high frequency even if the tweeters are not even connected yet so these are really nice full ranges from what I can see I can wait to have them in uh, in those uh, things and see how they sound in some speakers they most likely will sound even better than in beer kegs metal beer kegs but hey for my project we have metal beer cakes that's the point of the video and the project but yeah this sounds good i like it i like where this is going and i'm going to use most likely uh, capacitors for the tweeters and just use the tweeters for really really high frequency I, I need to investigate this a little bit because these speakers actually can go quite high from what i can see even without disconnected so this might be just for the top we'll see we'll see I, I'm thinking so most likely this is the end of part one of the video next part putting all of this inside those uh, metal uh, boxes and making them sound good I hope we'll see but up until now thank you parts express for all, all of this working perfectly Dayton audio for making these things awesome see you in part two bye